All right, folks, we need to have a discussion about our religious friends and family members who I'm assuming will be very disappointed about the fact that they will not be able to attend Easter Sunday service as it approaches. And I think that I've convinced everyone in my family who's religious that any sort of gathering um, should not happen. That's a very bad idea. Um, and I think that most churches are closed and there won't be a religious ceremony, but even like a makeshift gathering of like 20 people, it's not a good idea. Stay home. So we all have to do our due diligence in informing them about how bad of an idea that will be. And, I, you know, I don't want to generalize about religious people. I think that most of them will abide by social distancing and uh, self-quarantine requirements. That being said, for every 1,000 religious people who are actually obeying these requirements, you've got at least one person like this. Driving out of this Ohio parking lot is a woman who just attended a church service with dozens of other people, including children. Can I ask you about your decision to go to church to be inside that building? I wouldn't be anywhere else. Aren't you concerned you could infect other people if you get sick inside? No. People who don't go to this no. church. No. I'm covered in Jesus' blood. I'm covered in Jesus' well, blood. But other people who don't go to this church who you might encounter? All of these people go to this church. No, but you're going to be in places where other people I go are. to the grocery store every day. I'm in Walmart, what? Home Depot, all of those people. But you people. could get them sick from what happens They the could church. get me sick, but they're not because I'm covered in his blood. Thank you very much. I am covered in Jesus' blood. What the hell did you just say? Are we talking uh, you being covered in blood metaphorically, literally? Like, did you put blood on your body? Do we know where that came from? Is that uh, advisable? Um, and, you know, to me, like, it's still scary that these people don't care and they think that they're protected because they're religious. Um, when they gather them, spreading it amongst themselves themselves that's scary but like the fact that she admitted she's going to walmart she's going to home depot after she's been at these large gatherings i mean this is incredibly incredibly reckless and part of the problem is that there are a lot of religious leaders in this country with high profiles and very large platforms who are basically telling them not to obey these guidelines that the cdc is recommending uh, now this put together a compilation and uh, this was uh, terrifying. They don't want us to do this, but just turn around and greet two or three people. Tell them, you love them, Jesus loves them. Amen. Listen, this has to be the safest place. I said, this has to be the safest place. If you cannot be safe in church, you're in serious trouble. Serious trouble. We are not stopping anything. I, I got news for you. This church will never close. The only time the church is closed is when the rapture's taking place. This Bible school is open because we're raising up revivalists, not pansies. Do you believe God will bring his people to his house to be contagious with the liars? Of course not. So welcome to the house of God, the atmosphere, everything in this house is the presence, the power of God. And in the presence of God, no virus can stand. Fear cripples you. I can't go to church today. Why? Because I think apostle is going to have the virus. Do not fear. This virus is the spirit of God. That sounds kind of... Dum, 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 dum. So as you can see, they are not taking this very seriously, to say the least. And, uh, you know, this is this is horrifying. Uh, it makes it seem like we're doomed, right? Now, that guy who um, was the first person that you saw there, his name is Rodney Howard Brown, and he literally called COVID-19 a hoax, and he ended up getting arrested for violating Florida's social distancing rules and endangering the lives of followers. And, you know... It's funny because now they're trying to cry, oh, religious liberty. No, you were arrested in a state 
that's run by a Republican, Ron DeSantis. You're not arrested in a blue state. This isn't about your religious freedom being violated. This is about you potentially violating the liberty and life of other individuals. Because you go to church, you tell people it's a hoax, then they act like everything is normal, spread it, and get people killed. So this isn't about religious liberty. This is about liberty, period. You don't get to be reckless and then endanger the lives of other people. But there are other pastors who are pushing this same type of uh, bogus, irresponsible line of thinking. As Jason Wilson of The Guardian reports, Roy Moore, a pastor and pedophile, former Alabama Supreme Court judge and failed Trump-backed Alabama Senate candidate who lost amid allegations of sexual misconduct with underage girls, told Facebook followers he would write a letter to his fellow pastors on what he called their duty to continue church assemblies even in the midst of these trying times. Moore added, Our faith requires it, our duty demands it, and no law or government can prohibit it. Kenneth Copeland, a Texas-based prosperity gospel preacher who once defended his ownership of three private jets on the grounds that commercial flights would require him to get in a long tube with a bunch of demons, told viewers of his Victory Channel in early March that coronavirus was a weak strain of the flu and that fearing the pandemic was a sin. Fear is a spiritual force. Fear is not okay. It is sin. It is a magnet for sickness and disease. You are giving the devil a pathway to your body, Copeland said. He also criticized pastors who had suspended in-person services and moved to online streaming. I don't know what to say about this. We will get back to Kenneth Copeland in a minute here, but their idiocy is endangering the lives of everyone else. There are people who are deemed essential who don't have the choice to stay at home. Um, grocery store workers, people delivering packages, healthcare workers. So by you doing this, you're making this crisis worse. But I mean, saying that, trying to reason with them on a rational level, it doesn't really matter in actuality because they are operating on a different plane. They don't believe in, you know, the physics and um, reality of the real world, for lack of a better word. They just, they're living in a different world than us, psychologically speaking. So there's not really anything that we can do to penetrate them, which is why that sounded really bad. <laughs> there's nothing we can do to penetrate that mindset, you know, and, and get through to them is what I'm trying to say. Um, the hand gesture probably didn't help. That aside, <laughs> so bad. Um, we have to um, we have to punish them then. Arresting them for uh, saying this, inciting harm, I think that's important. And that may make me sound authoritarian, but you can't still hold services, encourage people to gather if that's literally going to get them killed. This isn't about you exercising freedom of speech or freedom of religion. All of these rights have limitations, and that limit, it really starts to take effect once you, exercising your rights, starts endangering people and infringes on their rights. Now, this is why it's important for these pastors to say the right thing, not be idiots and encourage people to, you know, um, still do these gatherings. But, you know, people are doing the right thing. Some pastors are choosing to hold virtual services, and that's still, like, Kenneth Copeland is condemning that. Like, how insane do you have to be? So we need the religious leaders, as big of charlatans as we think they are, because they are, we need them to actually be leaders in this moment and tell their congregations to do the right thing. Now, uh, Kurt Landry, he is another pastor, and he has his own radio show, because all of them do, and he's not necessarily um, taking advice from anyone except Daddy Trump, because Trump is basically an individual who God put on this earth for us to listen to, and so long as Trump is saying the right things, then they'll do the responsible thing. Take a look. But in the order of spiritual alignment, Donald J. Trump is the Cyrus above him. So what I'm saying to you is spiritually, if Donald J. Trump is coming out strong and decreeing that it was April the 12th, which he was doing a few weeks ago. And then I watched him right on television in the Rose Garden. It's like he was all excited, everything was going, and even the press noticed, hey, something switched in him, like a depression or an oppression came over him. And then the next thing you know, he drops the 12th, 
They add the 30 days on, and that's coming back from, from the different counselors, not just uh, Dr. Anthony Fauci. So basically what this tells me is that so long as the smart people are able to get through to Donald Trump, then a lot of the, you know, chud followers, the biggest cultists, the bootlickers will follow his lead. So it's really important that, you know, people like Dr. Fauci continue to have a really strong presence in Trump's administration and influence him to do the right thing. Because the minute Trump starts talking foolishly about having packed churches on Easter, his cultists are going to follow. Um, now, even if you're following social distancing guidelines, it's still important that we all think about this in very practical, realistic terms. We're not talking about fairy tale bullshit and religion. We have to be realistic. People have to know the underlying causes from a scientific standpoint about COVID-19. But on a news channel, Fox News, uh, Franklin Graham explained how COVID-19 is happening because of sin. Well, I imagine, though, that you get questions, given the number of Americans that the, the, thousands have already died, you know, do, you, you must get questions like, why would God allow this kind of thing to happen? Well, I, I don't think it's God uh, a, a plan for this to happen. It's because of the sin that's in the world, uh, Judge. Uh, man has turned his back on God. We have sinned against him. And we need to ask for God's forgiveness. And that's what Easter is all about. It's about God so loving the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but should have everlasting life. Jesus Christ came to save sinners. Uh, he didn't come to condemn the world, but to save the world. And if we put our faith and trust in him, uh, he'll forgive our sins and he'll heal our hearts and he'll change the course of our lives. And this, this pandemic, uh, this is a result of a, a fallen world, a world that has uh, turned its back on God. And well, so I would encourage people to pray and just let's ask God, let's ask God for help. I just want to remind you again that that conversation took place on the number one news network in America. He just said that the reason why we're all dealing with this global pandemic is because of sin. Okay. You see, this is when we have to acknowledge that these people are too far gone. Nothing that I say will get through to them. You can't explain how, you know, <laughs> these types of things transmit because it doesn't matter. They're not living in the real world. They are delusional. They're delusional, which is why when you try to explain to them the necessity of social distancing, it doesn't matter because they think, you know, even if they acknowledge that the virus is real, that COVID-19 is real, they don't believe in actual solutions like medication and healthcare. Uh, if you're Kenneth Copeland, he believes that he can heal you through the television. Uh, and I'm not kidding. Take a look. Put your hand on that television set. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. He received your healing. Yes. Now. Say it, I take it. I take it. I have it. I have it. It's mine. It's, it's mine. mine. I thank you and praise you for it. Yes, Lord. And I forgive if I have aught against any. And I praise you that I'm well and whole. I praise you that I'm well and whole. Yes. According to the word of God. According to the word of God. I'm healed. Yes. And I yes. consider not my own body. Yes. I consider yes. not my own body. I consider not symptoms in my body. I consider not symptoms, symptoms in my body. But only that which God has promised. Only, only that, that which God, which God has promised. Only that what the word has said. Only, only that, that what the word has said. And by is. his stripes I was healed. <laughs> and by his stripes I am healed now. I'm not the sick trying to get healed. I'm the healed and the devil's trying to give me the flu. That's right. Or whatever else kind of thing he's trying. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> healed and well. Yes. In the sweet name, name of, Jesus. of Jesus. Glory to God. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I am 
99% convinced that that man is a reptilian. He is not a human being. He is a reptilian. Frog. We see you. The aliens are here. That's evidence of it. <laughs> so this is a problem with religion. I think that religiosity in and of itself isn't problematic. And so far as you're able to have reasonable, logical, rational discussions about what cause and effect is in real concrete terms like it's not that sin causes COVID-19 it is you know the fact that viruses exist and we have actual mitigation tactics that we can use that will reduce them praying isn't going to reduce this virus it may make us feel better but it's not going to reduce this virus and I'm sorry but God doesn't exist so um if you think that praying is going to make it go away it's not now, you can use prayer if it makes you feel better, but the fact remains that there's no evidence of God, but there is evidence that this virus does exist, and it's not a hoax, and we need people, all people, religious people, to acknowledge and take it seriously, because if they don't take it seriously, then everyone else will suffer because of it. Self-quarantine will be extended because of people like this. Now, I want to stress that it's not all religious people who view the world like this. I know religious people who are very, very rational and pragmatic and intelligent, and they don't view the world as these wackadoos do. Nonetheless, there's a lot of people who are just too far gone, who you cannot get through to no matter how hard you try, because arguing with them in, you know, scientific or even relatable terms doesn't matter because they operate on an entirely different plane than we do. They think about this in terms of spirituality and what Jesus wants. So all I say is after watching all of this, God help us all. Thank you, Jesus. Say it, I take it. Yes. I take it. Oh. My own body. <laughs> Healed and well. Yes. In the sweet name of Jesus.